Zoom recording. Okay. So, uh, starting all over again, uh, we talked about the levels of thinking and we started with this uh, superficial uh, thinking, which must contain, as I said, the four, four components, the material object, sensible or using the sensing organs. Uh, there is some information on the, uh, uh, on the current object under investigation. And there is a brain with the ability to correlate information. So there is the brain is functioning, it's not damaged. I do have some information. I do have a reality to think about, which is a, a certain object. In this case, object, uh, it could be uh, directly sensible or indirectly sensible. It could be another type of subject, but it's an object for thinking and um, it's perceived by the brain through the senses. However, we say the first, use the first available information related to the object. That's, so I'm not, once I, let's say if somebody asks me a question, uh, do you know uh, this brother? Do you, do you know anything about him? Probably the last time I dealt with the brother is that uh, he was kind enough to give me a lift to the airport. As, then I would say, well, this brother is very helpful uh, and I give a positive recommendation. But uh, maybe there is yet more information which I can dig on the brother and I find there are different characteristics which could contradict my conclusion. But I used my superficial thinking and that's why superficial thinking is dangerous. Uh, although it's... Uh, uh, it's a thought process, but it's dangerous because uh, you may pass a wrong judgment simply because you did not use all the information available uh, to you. There is one more thing which I did not mention last time on the superficial thinking. Let me, I think I should add it here. Uh, when I said that, oh, these are the properties, I said it could lead to laziness, it's dangerous. Uh, and it's not quick thinking. Here, I want to add one more thing, use the most available, and even the, uh, use the most immediately available sensing of the object, which may not be thorough. Okay, for example, you see an, uh, an object uh, in the skies flying above you. Uh, and once you see it, you immediately uh, bring it to the brain that this is an airplane uh, or an, some type of aircraft. It may be yes, maybe no, because uh, there are things which may look like an aircraft, especially if it's uh, high in the sky. Uh, it could be a rocket. And could be a rocket that uh, is uh, uh, moving on its way to hit certain place. Uh, so because you used the your sensing, you you perceive the object, uh, you transfer the object to your brain, but your sensing of the object is not complete. So because your sensing of the object is not complete, uh, your thought process remains uh, simplistic, superficial. Uh, you should uh, make sure that what you saw is really what is the reality. What you hear is what is the reality. Uh, what you smell or uh, taste is exactly what you think uh, what that taste is. You are still at the sensing level. You still have not used information to judge and to pass. So uh, superficial thinking can come of two, uh, because of two uh, issues. One is the using the most immediate information without any further investigation or analysis and using the first uh, sensing uh, opportunity uh, without uh, uh, getting a full view of what you are uh, uh, thinking about. So these are the two types of uh, uh, components or, or two types of uh, uh, features which make a thinking superficial thinking. Uh, needless to say, 
that superficial thinking because it's convenient, it's easy, it's simple, and it allows you to pass quick judgment. It's very, very common in societies, especially societies which have uh, either uh, they were revived and declined or they are yet have not revived. Very simplistic uh, uh, societies, uh, no uh, ideological strength and power behind the people in the society. Those are very, uh, gear, uh, uh, very prone to superficial thinking. Unfortunately, uh, our ummah in the last 100 years had declined to the level where the majority of thinking within our groups of people is sh uh, sh uh, superficial. There is another name some people use, they call it shallow, because shallow is the opposite of deep. So shallow thinking can be used here, superficial or shallow. And maybe some of you can come up with better names than, the, than me. Okay, so this is what we have covered last time. And today I am planning to go into the second level, which is we call it the deep thinking. Uh, unless anybody has uh, a question to ask or a point to make, I can proceed. Okay. I take it as, uh, please proceed. Okay, Sheikh, uh, I have a bit of concern. Go ahead. Okay, so this might not be directly related to the topic we are discussing. Um, uh, 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 please speak closer to the mic. Okay, so this might not be directly related to the... Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I may uh, not answer the question if it's not directly re related. If I can make it related, I will uh, be more than happy to take it. Go ahead. Okay. So sometimes we have to deal with people who are into superficial thinking. Okay. So what's the best way to tackle these kind of people? Uh, Okay, I think uh, you you have a good question uh, here. I, I will address it sh in short sentences. Later on, I will take it uh, uh, more uh, closely. Uh, probably you have already noticed that our methodology and the way, especially in our interaction with the people, we try to raise the level of thinking of people instead of us going down to their level, because uh, I want a person to be able to conceive and understand what I am talking about, what my message is about, what my goal is about, and to be able to interact uh, with absolute consciousness. Uh, I don't want to take advantage of a person simply because he or she has a shallow thinking or superficial thinking, and that's by the way, it's totally different from almost every approach we have seen uh, in the current uh, uh, movements or even political parties, whether Islamic or non-Islamic, where they do rely very much on the fact that the subjects they deal with have shallow thinking. But in our case, no, uh, I have to make sure that I can raise the level of thinking of a person uh, before I really start uh, giving him the the uh, proper message and asking him to uh, uh, to work with me, so that's very important here to realize that many people we deal with are have shallow thinking and therefore they may be easily convinced without really thinking about what uh, I am talking about, uh, and probably you have seen that sometimes in. Uh, uh, let's say not in even in a haraqa, but in an introductory thing. If I start talking about the deep thinking about the aqidah and the proofs of the aqidah, I realize that the person in front of me is not acquiring all the thought that I am providing because his level of thinking is still shallow. So I wait a very good amount of time and spend good amount of 
effort to raise the level of thinking so he or she becomes at least deep thinker before I go into enlightened. So that's very important uh, in dealing with uh, people with shallow thinking. It's very, very important. So we don't, we don't want to rely in your moves and uh, ambitions and goals and objectives with, on people who, whose level of thinking is shallow. You have to make sure that you raise the level of thinking uh, among your people. And that's, in fact, the objective of our whole second stage in our work, in our movement towards the establishment of the, the towards the revival of the Ummah, if you call it, is to make sure that we bring, we raise the level of thoughts uh, and thinking in the Ummah. So the question comes now, how do you go from shallow thinking to deep thinking and what distinguishes deep thinking from shallow thinking? Let me open uh, a new slide here and saying what is deep thinking. Now, uh, compared to the shallow thinking, we can immediately realize that the deep thinking, of course, it requires the main components. Let's call back one more time the main components of thought. Still, I still need my uh, object. I still need my uh, senses. I still need my uh, information. Here I will add previous or attained information. I may not have the sufficient information on the subject, so I go and seek it. So it becomes, once I seek it and find it, find it and bring it to my brain, it becomes previous information related to the to the subject and then I need brain with the ability that I, I need to emphasize this with the ability to correlate to relate the uh, uh, info to objects or to reality. Let me start using the word reality as Brother Samer was using it. So now, uh, and let me try to put this in uh, uh, diagramic fashion, the way you could easily tell now my style is very much, uh, so if I have my object here, I have my brain here, Make my brain a little bit circular. Okay. And within the brain, there is info, info. Okay. And the uh, the information gets sensed here. And then I use the information. Here I will call it the correlation. Since I am talking about correlation here and deep, I want to remind that the brain here has uh, several properties uh, or characteristics let me call them. And these characteristics are storage, retrieval, and correlation. 
Okay. Now we have to be careful. You may have a person whose ability to store information and remember fast is very high, but the ability to correlate that piece of information which you are interested in to the object, let's say again, if the uh, object I am uh, talking about is a robot, okay? And I do have information on computer science, I have information on artificial intelligence, I have information on uh, uh, cars, automations, uh, industry, etc. But then my ability to use this information and correlate it to the object under discussion is low. Uh, let me give another example from my from my real life, the one. I'm a professor. I teach uh, computer science now, or math sometimes. Uh, in most of the cases where people teach, when exam times come, uh, I bring you a, a question, a problem, and the problem depends on a law, on a theory, on an equation. Let's say the Newton law, third Newton law, which talks about uh, the gravity uh, gravity and the uh, 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 and the, the, the ability for two objects with different masses to uh, uh, to interact with each other uh, then I bring you a question that solely depends on your memory memorization of this law so if you remember the the equation or the law or the theory then you can apply it to the uh, problem and you solve it so here what I am doing is I am relying on your ability to memorize and to remember. Memorize means you store the information whenever you read and to remember it at the time when you need it. I'm not, I'm not relying on this issue of correlation. Okay, so this is very important. Whereas, whereas if I allow you what they call it the cheating sheet, or an open book exam, I say, look, you can open the book. In fact, sometimes in my classes, I say you can open the internet, you can go to Google, you can search. Uh, but my problem is not a direct application of the information you get from uh, Google or from the book to the problem. Uh, you need to be able to make some investigation, some analysis, some correlation, so you can solve the problem. So here what I'm doing is, I am trying to provoke this property of the brain, which is different than remembering. Uh, if I may use the example, which is, uh, which is a sad example, is the Quran. You find someone who memorizes the Quran and you can ask him, read me from Surah Yusuf, ayah number 17. He starts reading, reciting. Then you switch, uh, read from Surah Ibrahim, the last 10 ayah, and he will read it. Very powerful, storing and retrieval. However, one of the ayah he read from Surah Yusuf, which says, In al hukmu illa lillah, amara alla ta'budu illa iyyah. Hukum belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. He ordered you to obey or worship none but him. And then immediately, once he finishes the recitation, you bring the issue of hukum uh, of Islam, the ruling of Islam, then that reciter, call him, the one who recites Quran perfectly, he would say, well, well, wait a second, this is politics. Don't talk to me about politics. And uh, I'm referring to certain examples which I encountered myself in my uh, in my in dealing with superficial people. So the superficial going back or the shallow, I, I may have uh, storage and retrieval good, but correlation is weak. Why correlation is weak? Well, uh, the, the brain facility, and this is, this is biological, physio biological, physiological, this is not the definition of thinking. The properties of this organ called the brain can be trained as much as the hand can be trained 
and you can grow your muscles, unlike me. You can grow uh, certain properties of your body uh, or, or any of your organs, it can be enhanced, but, and also the brain can be. And you, you know that some people, sometimes you, you are not good at, re, at remembering at recitation. You can be trained. You can use all types of training to be able to memorize and retrieve information quickly. The same thing, correlation of information to object, which means find the relevant information you need regarding this object, uh, whether it takes too long time or too short time. If it takes too long time, okay, so I'm still thinking, I'm still browsing my information, finding what's relevant. Uh, let me bring an example from the uh, from the Hukum Shari, which is related to our uh, cases here. Let's say example. Now I still have not given the definition of deep thinking. I'm just trying to show what, how do I approach this issue when I become deep? Example of deep thinking. Let's say I have the question, what is the Islamic hukum shari uh, on, uh, I'll bring a little bit difficult question on stocks or stock market. Now, I could be, I'd say, well, First thing that comes to my mind, oh, let's say stocks or uh, corporates that sell alcohol are bad because alcohol is haram. Then I immediately jump to the conclusion that if the stock or a corporate that does not sell haram, then it's okay. That's, that's one way of looking at it, and it's very superficial. However, however, if I say Look, what is the reality of a stock? What is it? What is it that I am buying? When I say I buy a stock, even if it's selling alcohol or cars, what is it that I am buying? What does it constitute? Oh, I am buying a share in the corporate. So I'm not buying the product or selling the product. So it's not buying a product, alcohol or pig or uh, something that's uh, haram. I am buying a share in a corporate, corporate. Now, what does, then I ask the question, what does share in a corporate mean? I need to ask myself this question. So now I'm digging in my information, in my brain, probably my brain does not have any information about partnerships or about companies or about corporations. Then I could be stuck myself, but with a you for lack of information. Now, if I am shallow thinker, I will go back to this first here, to this first thought that I have, oh, just forget about the share, whatever. I will just look at the, uh, it's not selling anything haram, therefore it's okay. But if I am a deep thinker now, I know that I need an information to be able to pass a judgment. So I am correlating that this stock is, has to do 
with having a share. So I am a shareholder now. Share means shareholder. If I'm a shareholder, that means I'm a partner. So I need information. What does share in a corporate mean? Here, I say it means you become a partner in a company. So I'm a partner now. And then comes in get information on allowed or not allowed partnership. See, if I am a deep thinker now, going deeper now into this issue. So I get information on allowed or not allowed partnership. Then I will come to the to the to the uh, sticky point. Oh, unfortunately, I have no info. Simply, never come came across this issue. But I am desperate. I I, I need I need a judgment. So one way is say. Oh, who can, I may then, one way out, who might know? Look, once I come to this question, who might know, then immediately I realize I cannot pass a thought. And if you realize you cannot pass a thought, you cannot proceed in the thinking because there is a component that's missing that is deep. That is deep. And that's why Imam Shafi'i, in fact, not only Imam Shafi'i, but all the Imams in the past, they used to say, Man qala la adri faqad afta, who says, I don't have enough information or don't have the proper knowledge to pass the rule. Faqad afta, then he gave you a fatwa. So actually, he did give a conclusion that I'm not sure. I don't have enough information. I do not know. If you come to the conclusion that I don't know, then you're really already in the in the sphere of deep thinkers. Uh, and this is uh, there is another uh, saying uh, again, and this I think it's being referred to Imam Ali radiyallahu uh, where he says people are of four categories. One category is a person, a person who really doesn't know. He doesn't have information, but he does know that he doesn't know. See, he knows. He says, I am aware that I don't, I just don't know. I have enough knowledge and courage to say, I don't know. Then say this person can be educated. You can raise his, uh, his level of thought. And the person who really knows which means you give him like this issue about the stock, he knows, and he knows that he knows. He is aware that he has enough information. So he's, he's not being uh, lazy, or he's not being hesitant, or he's not being scared of, of giving the, the thought on the issue. Like if you ask someone the question, um, could be a so-called quote-unquote scholar in Islam, you tell him, what do you think about the, the rules, the governmental or governance in Pakistan or in Saudi Arabia or in Malaysia or in Turkey? Or based on the knowledge he has, he knows what it is. He could figure it out that these are uh, uh, governances which are not controlled or they don't abide by Islam. That's, it's not, it doesn't take a for, for a person with knowledge, they know. But he does not use the knowledge that he has to pass the law, and he will tell you, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know this about this issue. Ask someone else. Don't ask me, ask somebody else. Okay? That's the type of person that is, he knows, uh, that he knows, but he is not willing to pass the knowledge. That's a coward. That's a coward. That's not a healthy person mentally. 
But if he knows and he knows that he knows and he passes the knowledge, that's a scholar, you use him. And then of course there are other categories, but the point here is once I come to the conclusion that I don't have the information, I can seek it somewhere else, then that's fine. Or I can uh, read, find out the relevant information on the issue and then pass the judgment or thought. So this is, this is a very common, and the, the reason I brought this example is that this is what the way when I read about the uh, different rules that uh, some scholars, they pass on this issue, you find that they are using their superficial, shallow thinking. They take this most immediate issue, which is not related See, about the product is being sold, that's not the issue. The issue is what is the reality of this stock? First, you, you've got to understand it. And then where do you get the information on this, whether it's allowed or not? So this is an example of how deep thinking is. So now let's go and try to make some definition. So definition number one. Okay, first thing is uh, fully analyze the question under consideration. and fully, completely find all relevant information to the uh, question under investigation. Let me call it the subject here, under discussion. Okay, then use the correlation property of the brain to make some correlations between the information you have or just obtain possibly i don't i don't want to ignore that to explain and pass judgment on the subject so here when i say find all relevant information this you have to use we do it this way, use your brain property of uh, uh, retrieving information. But sometimes probably you already have experienced that. You say, only if I can remember, I know that I know, I know I have information, I can't remember. I know I have read it. Probably I've read it twice, or maybe even I have given exam on this issue, but I, I forgot it. So this is the brain property of retrieving information. Now, you may then say, okay, let me remember where I can find it, which book it's stored in, or which note, or which article I have written on this issue. So let me go and look for it, uh, see where. So all of this is use the, uh, the facility of the brain, this facility of retrieving because it's very important to be able to get the information. Uh, the fact that you have it, it doesn't mean you remember it or you can use it. Quite often you say, oh, you know what? I just remember that I knew something about it when you gave the wrong opinion. 
uh, and to fully analyze the question under consideration, that's also here again using the uh, senses because you want to sense. Sense means what does sense mean here? It could be uh, listen to the question carefully. You have been told quite time and time again that understanding the question, understanding the question means really knowing exactly what you want to pass a judgment on is almost half of the answer. 50% of your effort is already done by knowing exactly what you are talking about. So listen carefully. Uh, many of us, we don't listen. Uh, you think that you hear the question, you hear part of it, and then you ignore the rest of that, so you were not able to uh, to answer correctly or bring the, the relevant information. So listen to the question carefully, inspect a reality, let's say if it's visually, and this is particularly true for the uh, uh, medics, for people who work in medicine, probably if we have some brothers or sisters in the medical field, nurses, doctors, uh, whatever, uh, quite often you need to see what, what is the issue is about. Uh, someone is coming and tell you, look, I have something, uh, uh, let's say pimples beneath my ear. So you just look at it. He doesn't really uh, pay attention and immediately he takes you somewhere to a surgery. Uh, thinking that this is a tumor or something, this is crazy. And you may you may really uh, lose your life if someone treats you in this manner. Whereas if you looked carefully, he may find it that this is just uh, an allergy that came out and then um, became a little bit uh, uh, sore. Uh, and then he made the wrong judgment. So you have to close easily, I mean, thoroughly using the senses, which is the first step to realize what the issue is about. You have to listen uh, carefully so you know what the issue is about. You have to see, inspect, visualize, so you know what is it that you are looking at. And if you are uh, tasting or smelling, don't tell me that you are smelling uh, uh, a gas, let's say a nerve gas, uh, spreading all over uh, in the area, and then you start spreading fear among the people and the craziness people have to do something. Uh, make sure that what you smelled is, is correct. So still, you have not applied a thought what to do or what not to do uh, versus that. But whether you are smelling or tasting or touching uh, an organ or uh, listening or uh, viewing, you have to be very detailed, very detailed. And when you start looking at the information, find all relevant information to the subject. You cannot ignore anything. And then the correlation, property of the brain to make the proper correlation. Now here, issue now comes uh, sorting the information, maybe dismissing, some accepting some and so on. So all of this comes in into the process of deep thinking. So comes the question. So this is basically now, so the deep thinking is so I can do deep thinking is the process thinking which utilizes the complete sensing of the subject and uses all relevant information with complete correlation between the information and the subject.
and probably you may ask or I may ask you know, somebody may ask the question is let me put in this how deep is deep are there levels of deep thinking and uh, where do you stop looking for information see these questions are very vital uh, if you remember especially those who are in the uh, Islamic schools, when you define ijtihad, which is the process of deriving rules, they would they will give you the first word, it is badlul wis'i, badlul wis'i, istinbat al-hukm al-shara'i min adillatihi tafsiliya. Oh, badlul wis'i, badlul wis'i means exhorting the effort and uh, I said exhort or exerting the effort some translations say exhausting the effort which means you really feel tired or at some point beyond this you cannot you have done all possible due diligence all due diligence in finding the evidences related to the issue at hand to be able to extract a rule, which means you all the ayat which are related to the subject, you take them into consideration. And then you can sort them out, important, unimportant, strong, less stronger, uh, uh, useful in this case or not useful. So you look at all the possible ayat on the issue, all possible hadith on the same issue, all possible sahaba comments on the issue, uh, and the subject itself, the issue, what is it exactly? Uh, does it have different views or different versions or it's the one and only one thing? So this is called Badl al It's uh, exhausting all your effort or exerting the utmost effort that you have, which means beyond this level, you feel helpless. So that's the highest level of deep thinking is ijtihad. Highest level, if you want to say what is the highest level, so let me do it here. So to make some standard at least, highest level of deep thinking and something that we correlate to is what we call ijtihad. Okay, in our case, it's Actually, let me make it somewhat. Ijtihad is highest level of deep thinking. If you want to know what is the real deep thinking, the, uh, the, the deepest, because once you are shallow, you start going up. So now I will come to this uh, uh, accumulative or step-by-step uh, -step growing. Once you go up, in your uh, uh, deep thinking, you go above shallow thinking, one level, second level, third, fourth, fifth, uh, until n levels, until you become uh, to the absolute highest level of deep thinking. And I mentioned Ishtihad. Uh, another uh, form of deep thinking is what we call scientific investigation. Under today's, uh, under, uh, today's terminology, if you want to publish a paper, when scientific, you want to, pub you want to publish a, a paper, uh, the first thing the referees are going to see, have you looked at relevant work to what you are doing? Let's say I'm uh, making an investigation on the ability 
of transferring information or knowledge to the brain from outside. Okay, this is, it sounds like, uh, uh, like fiction, but let's say I'm investigating this issue. Uh, and I am claiming that I should be able, or I could be able to transfer a certain uh, information to your brain from outside. And then I do my investigation and I publish a work and this is my, my results. That's what I think. Someone will tell me, look, there are people who made this investigation before you and they did, they have some certain approaches. Have you looked at them? I said, oh, I have looked at three of them. They will say, but there are two other ones which are also important. Why don't you go and investigate and see what they have come up with, make comparisons and come back. Okay, I go and do that. And then once I finish this, someone else come back to tell me, see, uh, when you made your testing, you used brains of certain animals like mouse. You did not use the brain of humans because you were not allowed to experiment on humans. How can you make the correlations, where is you in your in your brain, in your thought, uh, the correlation between the mouse, between the brain of a mouse and the brain of uh, of a human, uh, with this technology or this idea that you are investigating? So this scientific investigation requires deep thinking, and it can go very deep because the communities that deal with this requires what is called full investigation. Sometimes, sometimes. Now probably someone will, will tell me, look brother, this was not completely done with the, uh, with the vaccination uh, issue of uh, Corona. Uh, and that's, that comes to what are the hindrances? What can stop deep thinking or divert deep thinking into shallow? That's a different question. So this is the highest level of deep thinking. Every time you come and see, look, in order to pass a judgment, you have to be very thorough. Uh, thorough in the analyzing the object, as we said before, in collecting the relevant information from all possible sources, whether I already have them in my brain or I have them in my books, the one I have, and then to do the correlation between what I have in my brain and what's, uh, uh, what the subject uh, is. So that's how the deep thinking becomes. Then the question, the next, how deep is deep? I would say there could be various levels of depth. And probably uh, you have heard this quite often, Oh, this brother is very deep. Or oh, he's even more thorough than X, Y, Z. So you can compare uh, and you see the difference in the type of uh, analysis. Now, in, uh, I want to give this example, especially for some brothers and sisters who see some answers to some questions, especially political questions from Sheikh Atta Abu Rashti. Whenever you ask him a question, he will come and give you all the background, all the relevant information. Say, so in order to be able to understand this issue, I need to give you some background. I need to give you the information which I rely on. I need to give you some facts before I come to the conclusion. And the last paragraph will be the conclusion. That's, excuse me, just one second. Okay, so the, so you could tell how people differ in their levels of uh, thinking. And of course, you can also uh, uh, easily detect that, look, uh, not all the people have 
sufficient information uh, either in their uh, brains or in the literature that surrounds them or the uh, thoughts and information that they have come across. So that's why you find someone is deeper than the other. But nevertheless, a deep thinker by no means is a shallow thinker, even if his level is not so deep. He's not very deep in, in the thought. But definitely, you rise above the shallow, the, the distinction, the, 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 the line between a shallow thinker and a deep thinker, the deep thinker who does not pass a judgment on the first available information to his brain. Now, a shallow thinker may actually, may actually have lots of information, probably more than I do, probably more than information I have, but the person uh, has got used to simply just use the first information that comes to the brain, pass the judgment and move. Uh, because the uh, type of thinking he is used to and he wants to and he's comfortable with and that's convenient to him or her is that type of shallow thinking that does not require exhausting an effort or exerting extra effort. Uh, and he or she could be happy with that, but of course, uh, eventually that, that doesn't pay. Uh, so so the, the amount of information in the brain is not, the factor. The factor is the usage of the information. How much you use of your information in order to pass a judgment, not how much you store in your brain, not how your big library, your library is. And that's the example I gave about a person who recites, who memorizes the entire Quran. And some of them, they memorize maybe five or six or seven books of the Hadith. I heard about people who have 100,000 hadith memorized by heart and the Quran Kareem and some tafsirs. So that amount of information is way beyond I even have a come across, not leave alone, uh, uh, read or memorized. But when it comes to passing a judgment or using that for a thought, you'll find that uh, uh, they are shallow, not deep. So the, the issue of depth at the beginning does not have to do with the amount of information available. However, it does have for the deep thinker, and that's what distinguishes a deep and deeper, the um, how much you try to get the information from your brain or from the books or sources that you have. Now, of course, let me uh, be careful here because previously we said the components of thoughts are previous information in the brain. Now, when I investigate an issue right now, let's say if, I, if somebody asked me a question and I want to investigate it, let's say I don't have the information, I browse it, I find information on Wikipedia, and on Google, which is relevant. What does find it mean? It means I bring it to my brain. I put it in my brain and then I use it from my brain to the, and apply it. So now it becomes my information. It becomes an information that I already have in my brain vis-a-vis -vis or which, which applies to the, to the subject matter. So even if I, as I said, with, even with open book exam, with open book exam, the student goes and finds the, the law or the rule which is applicable to the, to, the, uh, to the problem and use it and solve the problem. So he got that information which is relevant to the problem, put it in, in his brain, and then apply it. So it has to go to the brain. So there is no, uh, no confusion here. Or, uh, uh, so that's the issue here for deep thinking. As I said, you need, uh, uh, going back here, uh, the subject matter from the sensing perspective, you have to make sure that you hear the question, you saw the uh, problem or the issue, you smelled it carefully, you uh, taste, you touched, you, you, so you know what the reality is. So the reality from sensing perspective, you have, uh, uh, you did not simply hear the first two words and then you thought that you got it all, as many of us do 
when we talk and argue with each other, is I hear the first half sentence from your mouth, then immediately I fire up and I start responding. Uh, now, I could be uh, correct and deep in the sense that I have heard this part of the sentence, and then I, I've heard your complete sentence, complete statement, time and time again, in many occasions. So I retrieve it from my brain. So immediately I fill the blank. So there is a difference between filling the correct blank or just using the first two or three words and uh, I reply. So that's one. And the second is we look at the relevant information, whether it's from my brain or from the books, and then I use the correlation property. So I use to correlate my whatever information I gather, I apply it to the problem, uh, to the problem at hand, not like this talk, as I said, before the, my exam, my first example on the stock here. I looked at the wrong issue, the issue of the, uh, the product that's being sold by the companies and the stock is not a product. The stock is a share in the company that sells a product. So, so that's, that makes, we have to be careful here. So the three major issues, one more time, uh, the, to be deep, my sensing of the object or the reality has to be thorough. Uh, the information relevant to the subject, I have to exhaust my ability to find the relevant information. Then I have to correlate this information to the subject so I can pass a judgment using different techniques like sorting the information, which is higher priority, lower priority, more important, less important, more uh, uh, fresh and the new compared to the old. Sometimes probably you have heard this quite often that uh, someone is bringing you some news, some issue. Say, oh brother, thank you. This is old. I've heard it last year. So you are bringing me an old information. There is something in your, okay? So there is, uh, or maybe this was only five days ago. Today, things have changed. Give me more recent information. So you sort the information based on age, based on importance, based on its more relevance, based on uh, it has been used or not used, uh, uh, proved or not proved, and so on. You, so you dismiss some and you accept some. Dismiss some based on, again, let's say, what I've said, let's say, old, irrelevant, uh, not, uh, uh, not verified independently. You you see these quite often these days. Independently, let's say New York Times brings an issue and talks about it. Then at the end you say New York Times was not able to verify this piece of news independently. Now already they gave you the information, so now you are free to use it or not. But they will say, look, we, did, we were not able to. So this is uh, not uh, verified, irrelevant, old, uh, and so on. There could be some other reasons. And accepting some based on relevance, accuracy, source, confidence, and so on. I am confident in the source, like in the hadiths. Uh, and, and you know the issues of the hadith. Uh, some hadiths were uh, categorized in different levels based on the confidence in the uh, in the narrator, uh, the uh, how strong or how confident, how much confidence you have in the uh, in the narrator. They accepted the hadith or rejected, or they put it in different categories like Sahih, Hasan, Mursal, Maqtu', Mausul, etc., etc. There are all types of variations which you guys know better than me, but. That's the, uh, the uh, acceptance. So these are the issues that define the deep thinking. And we already said there are levels of that. And in our work here, I need to mention attitude.
we need to train ourselves to be deep thinkers, uh, acquire information from verified sources. We need to be able to do that. Uh, keep sources of information close by because sometimes you may not be able to remember, but you need the, the, uh, the source, uh, train your senses to be able to acquire full and complete view of the issue at hand. Okay, so the, all of this, uh, and then the most important thing is train your brain for correlation and uh, you should probably focus on this and concentrate on this one, the correlation. I need to be able to train my brain on correlation uh, besides the memorization. I, let's say if I'm reading the Quran and I am reciting the Quran and I'm memorizing it, which is good, but so I'm training you now my brain and I'm using my facility to memorize. To be uh, a bit sharper here, I would stop and let's say every four or five hours or 10 maybe and see where would these ayat apply? Some, some of you who are following my tafsir sessions, when I'm using the uh, Quran as revealed, almost in every time I do a session, I try to find a relevance between an incident or event that uh, was behind the revelation of a certain ayah or few ayat and uh, our reality today. Now that besides it's useful for many, but it's a training for myself. So this training now, it becomes immediately, every time I come across an ayah or a hadith like this, the correlation facility of my brain starts functioning automatically to find the relevance. So that's when I say train the brain for correlation. And again, let me bring the example. In my classes, in my university classes, I insist, I have always insisted throughout my whole education or teaching life to make sure that the student does not rely only on his ability to memorize. I want him to correlate. So I give problems which are too difficult to solve based on immediate available theory or uh, uh, formula. I want to see how he can use that formula or that equation or that theory to solve an issue or to solve a problem. I don't want him to just to memorize that. Okay, so this is to train the brain for correlation besides the memorization is essential. And by and large, this is probably the most difficult part and you know why it's difficult? Because there is usually a, a cause behind that. There is a cause. There is somehow in the raising up of a nation or a group of people or a segment of people, it is almost, uh, uh, it's almost a planned somebody, someone, some organization, want to keep this facility of correlating information to subjects to keep it weak. Because this is how you keep people shallow and shallow people are easier to manipulate. They are much easier to, to manipulate. They are much easier to make them 
to subjugate them to all types of issues. So it is, it's a very crucial matter, matter in our endeavor for revival to make sure how we can uh, improve this property of the brain in people and uh, uh, use it so that it becomes useful. It does not remain uh, uh, remain idle, which is unfortunate in the uh, uh, majority of people in the world, in fact, not only in our uh, part of the world where Muslims are, but majority uh, of the people in the world, uh, they do have uh, that facility almost uh, unused, uh, except for certain certain segments of uh, of work anyway so these are this is the issue which i wanted to talk about uh, tonight and let me uh, open the floor for our discussions and the questions uh, to see where we can take it from here the floor uh, two questions but i'll ask uh, the first one uh, in uh, for deep thinking, we're asking how deep is deep, and with this, I have kind of two examples. I want to see where it falls within this spectrum. Uh, okay. We uh, one, one is that, for instance, uh, we studied the topic of Qadal al Qadr and the topic of Mutazala and how they started thinking about a lot of things, and they was fitting about it, and they they went into the wrong course so we're, we're talking about that they are looking to information and they're correlating but it's going outside the scope that's unseen uh similarly there are some topics of philosophical thinking where people they start philosophy uh, philosophizing about different things they're taking a lot of information they're correlating but they are kind of going outside so they're obviously outside the they're more than superficial thinking but does it still fall within the deep thinking yes it is deep thinking it is deep thinking uh, and uh, uh, now what I think what you mentioned something is absolutely uh, correct is when they uh, looked at the subject, let me go back to my question here. This is under the subject under consideration. Yeah, like the stocks issue. So when they talk about qada wa qadar, they immediately, uh, instead of uh, of understanding the issue at hand, they looked at the creation of the deeds. Who creates my deed? Instead of who is responsible for the deed, and that's the uh, the diversion. Now then, they looked. They started looking at all possible evidences that support whether the human acts actions are created by Allah Azza wa Jal or created by the human himself. Uh, and they, the all philosophers of the time, they split around this issue and they missed the issue at hand. So they really, they were deep, but unfortunately on the wrong, uh, on, the, on the wrong subject, which is not applicable. Now, uh, I could go even further and say why uh, it happened like that. Why, why did they divert to another issue rather than the, uh, the issue at hand? Well, there are many reasons. One of them is that this question was raised before them by old philosophers in the Greek. So they thought that, oh, we have something similar in the Quran that Allah Azza wa talks about creation and about creation of acts and events, and they found some ayat. So they thought that so they use this information which they already have to apply it to a subject which the old Greek philosophers brought in. And then they, 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 they went deep into this issue. But just like, let's say, let me give you the example. If you are going, let's say, uh, driving uh, towards uh, the south, towards Dallas. And at one point of time, you took the wrong highway and you, don't, you did not have the GPS. And you keep looking for signs that you already know and you found similar signs to the road that takes you to Dallas, whereas this road takes you somewhere to Houston. How? Well, there are some villages and some cities, they, they, they have the same names. Routes, they have the same names. They, 
the uh, edge along the highways, they are similar. So the deeper you go now, uh, the farther away you get from your uh, location. But you are investigating the road, you are looking at all possible information you have, and you get uh, to the wrong place. So that's what happened with the people uh, who studied al qada or al qadr from the perspective of who creates the actions rather than who is responsible. Uh, and then the second reason, I said there are several reasons. The second reason is, is to, like the Sahaba did, when the Sahaba approached these issues, they looked at something which is already proven as a aqidah. So I take my aqidah as a base, which I already confirmed with, with a different level of th different type of thinking, which we'll talk about the enlightened thinking. And I make that enlightened thought my base and guide in my deep thinking. So if ever my deep thinking takes me a little bit farther away from what my, my base tells me, then I go back to my base. Now, again, I am jumping ahead a little bit, which is very important, is what if I go too deep and I happen to take the wrong direction. What is going to get me back? If I don't have a base, which is a governing base over deep thinking, I could be easily get lost. Like the people who get the scientific thought, and then eventually they use the scientific thought to go back to condemn or to... Uh, uh, to violate the base of the aqidah. They went with the deep thinking in a different direction altogether. That's what happened with the uh, people in the Mu'tazila or Qadariya or other uh, philosophers. Okay. Is this yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, the second question I want to ask was, you, you had mentioned in your first initial slide, the kind of properties of the brain where you talked about the storage, the retrieval and the correlation. Mm -hmm. uh, can, and I know in the, in the uh, previous earlier sessions, you had uh, distinguished between the brain and the mind. So can we say the first two, the storage and the retrieval, they are more of the properties of a brain and correlation is the property of a mind that distinguishes, no. I mean. No. Okay, no, actually correlation is a, a property of the brain. The brain has the ability to correlate and that's a property because if it doesn't have the property, you cannot create it. So it is a, a property created in the brain to be able to memorize, to be able to recollect or retrieve, and to be able to connect this information to one or more pieces of objects. Uh, that's a property of the brain which can be trained which can be ignored or suppressed, similar to the uh, memorization and, and retrieval of information. Can be trained or can be suppressed. Probably you know many people who would tell you, look, brother, the best thing I can do is to memorize Al-Fatiha and Qul Allahu Ahad. Beyond that, I can. And I'm not going to try. It's beyond me. Okay, he did not train. He doesn't like to be trained. But if you ask him questions, about some issues, you find that he's absolutely sharp. Uh, so the, these are uh, properties of the brain. The mind now, the mind uses all of them. The mind must use all of them, must use, must be able to store some data in the brain to be able to collect it and to be able to correlate this information to that object. Like, let me give you the example. When Allah Azza wa Jal taught Adam alayhi salam, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He taught him, he gave him all the names of all things. Now, when the test came to uh, Malaika and in front of Adam, uh, let's say, let's give you uh, 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 an object, give me its name, or I give you a name, give me its object. So now, uh, uh, Adam is able to correlate that this name tree applies to the palm tree, applies to the apple tree, applies to anything that grows above the ground, uh, and so on. 
so that's the ability to, cor to correlate rather than just retrieve, just recollect. What did I tell you? What did I teach you? I, oh, I, you taught me, my God, you taught me Adam, Muhammad, Ali, three mountain. You taught me this, but what is the mountain? Oh, he can point a finger to the mountain. What is an, a, a crow like the uh, sons of Adam? So this is the ability to correlate, which means to, to do the connections, just like in a network of computers, you, 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 you do connections between two things. Uh, so I know that the router is connected to a switch. The switch is connected to a tower. The tower is connected to some other switch. So that's a type of connectivity. Now today in physiology and anatomy, they talk about the, the physiology of this connectivity. So let's say if uh, you ask me a question about, let's say, uh, a trip, I talk to, uh, let's say, to, uh, to America last year. And then if someone is measuring the activity of my brain and watching it, they will see all types of neurons which are being created and moved so that then at maybe a minute later, I'll tell you, oh, you know what? In there, I have seen uh, the O'Hare airport, uh, I was uh, to that place, I went to Oasis for uh, Islamic and to this camp, to that camp. So all of this starts coming back. So I'm correlating now this question that you give me to the objects that I have in my brain. And the physiology of the brain is there. So there is a, a physiological issue. Uh, that's why it is property of the brain. It's not uh, something that's... Uh, a result of the thinking, but it's a cause of thinking rather than result. So this 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 uh, property of the brain, would we say, would be in all other creatures, like for the animals, so you know they have the storage and that they have the retrieval to do. They also correlate, or this is very specific to humans? No, the, actually until now, until now the, uh, the uh, knowledge that we have uh, from many different sources, that the animals, they don't have the ability to correlate with the brain. They have the ability to correlate with instincts. The reason we say that is because if the issue, which is uh, being tested with, like with dogs, like training the dogs, the mouse, etc., if it does not have anything to do with the instinct or the organic needs, the correlation is impossible. So the... Uh, the correlation as a, as a property of the brain for thinking purposes, for the mind, uh, the only one until now that we know of who can correlate information to objects, even if it does not, it's not related to instinct, is the human brain. And that's another factor which probably I have to stress maybe some other time. The difference between uh, uh, responses that have to do with instincts and responses, brain responses, which have nothing to do with instinct. Like, let's say, if you if you ask me about uh, to describe a mountain or a cloud passing by, uh, or uh, uh, simply uh, an object moving in front of me. If that one does not have to do with my uh, hunger or thirst or instinct, I still can do that. Uh, animals cannot do. Animals, you, they, they must be trained based on the instincts. So the key element would be correlation when we talk about the thinking then. I mean, yes. yeah, correlation. That's what that, is, that, that distinguishes between all other creatures and uh, that that and, and makes humans, yes. insan the ashraf al makhlukat i mean meaning the correlation aspect of it that he, they can right. compute the information retrieval exactly exactly that piece of the property of the brain in the humans that's what what allows the thinking to be distinguished as a process on its own a thinking and that's only for humans And mind utilizes this aspect of it. The mind, yes, mind uses the correlation. Mind uses all. 
The mind uses the uh, information, which is use the retrieval to be able to retrieve, which means get back from my cells, from my storage in my brain, and then correlate that to some object under discussion. Now, uh, and the brain, uh, the, the mind in this case, which is the thinking process, in order to complete the thinking process, I have to be able to get information out of my brain and uh, correlate that information to the object at hand and to be able to pass a judgment. The mind that utilizes that, yes, correct. The exactly. mind utilizes the, the properties, all the properties of the brain, including the uh, correlation. Okay. okay. Any other question? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, please, somebody has the uh, somebody has the mic, and you are not talking. Can you mute it so the brothers can talk? Uh, I know that some. Uh, I can mute you. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, uh, just an extension of this last uh, answer uh, that you answered. So some people make uh, the correlation in a wrong way. For example, they have the information, three, four information, and the correlation is wrong. Does this wrong correlation qualify for the deep thinking? For example, we have many factors, we have many information on a political reality, yeah. but different people make it in a wrong correlation, uh, different political uh, these, uh, facts. So reaching on a wrong, con a different conclusion uh, by different people. So yes. does this wrong correlation qualify for the deep th thinking? Uh, yes, uh, deep thinking has not to do with correct or wrong or false. The, like the question about qada or qadar, like the brother did. Uh, so you can be a deep thinker, but you, you with your depth, uh, you do the wrong correlation. You use the wrong information. Uh, and you use the wrong view of the object. All of these, uh, they are possible. Like you analyze an object thoroughly, and then uh, you took part of the object or the subject, which may not be relevant to the issue or can divert you or can confuse you, and then you get a wrong thought. So correctness or incorrectness does not sub, uh, 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 approve or defy deep thinking. So you might be a deep thinker, but you have wrong conclusions. Why the wrong conclusions? You use the wrong information at the wrong time. You used all the information, uh, unproved information. Uh, you did not uh, completely verify the correctness. And that's why the, uh, the tabi'een or tabi'i tabi'i who collected the hadith, that's how they differed among each others. On the, uh, on the level, uh, how, on the level of verification that they took for the people whom they accepted the narration from. Uh, and the same thing you see it in the, uh, in, uh, in scientific conclusions, in science and industry, you will find sometimes uh, you have a design, you have, you spend lots of time on designing an, uh, a product uh, or a software, uh, but then probably at one point of time, you had some uh, statement, which is, which is not supposed to be in your software and your program. It will crash your system at the time when it should not crash. Let's say it crashes at the time when you are putting that software in an ICU unit. So some people may die because of that. So that's deep. Doesn't mean that it's not deep. No, it's deep, but simply you 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 got it. Uh, there was some mistake, some error, uh, and the worst type of deep uh, of erroneous deep thinking is the one that is on purpose done. You know, on purpose means. You'll find an idea so well structured, you you can sell it anywhere, but then there is some some issue, some diversion, 
uh, at one point of time where you cannot catch the, the diversion. They just play on uh, like in, in all types of media manipulation. I just mentioned the example where New York Times, I was just reading an article. And then towards the end, now the article is, is long. If I did not go through all the way to the end, I would not have caught that piece of a statement. New York, New York Times could not verify this piece of information independently. It means it's a lie. Actually, it's, it means it's a lie. It's not correct. And, and this is a protection for them from lawsuits. Because they already know that we, somebody told us, we could not verify it. Nobody was able to tell us whether it's correct or not. I just made a story about it. So they made a story with false information. But the story is very, uh, it's very appealing. It may divert you all the way to different directions. That's what I said. It can be on purpose, wrong, deep thinking. But it's still deep, and it's dangerously deep. Okay. I have a question. Questions? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Uh, last week, uh, you did answer my question, but again, I went back to the uh, book, uh, Ibn Kasir, this book, uh, where uh, the angels uh, have a dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Adam, Adam, Adam Islam was being uh, created. Allah said that uh, I'll create Adam, but the angel, angels were asking, uh, were telling him that uh, you're creating other person, people who, who will create fitna and who will shed blood. Shed blood. So my, my question is regarding, actually uh, last week you did explain it, but again, uh, there are a few instances of few, uh, few uh, uh, stories where uh, they talk about the war between the jinn and the malak. So uh, in this book is also mentioned that uh, these traditions are old, whether it is true or not, but he has mentioned it. So how do how do I relate with this, uh, Chef? How do how, how do I uh, uh, look? Because even in some bands in YouTube, I have I have listened to bands and they talk about this incident. Hmm. Uh, so I was just thinking uh, how how to uh, uh, take it forward. Zagalaf. Alaikum salam. Yeah, uh, thank you, brother. Very simple. Uh, as I said a few minutes ago, uh, in terms of uh, uh, accepting a deep thinking or not. It depends on the uh, uh, information on the subject and the level of verification of that information. That's why uh, I said in the uh, in Islam, the level of verification of a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, was so high because it's very important. And now the same thing on the Quran, when Allah Azza wa Jal passes a piece of information from ghayb, ghayb which means the subject matter is beyond the senses. So the malaika are beyond our senses. Uh, the creation of Adam was beyond our senses. So we cannot apply the thinking process on the subject itself. The only thing we can is to understand the information that's passed to us. So the information is passed that Allah Azza wa Jal passed part of the information. He said, I created jinn. But where is jinn? They are not sensible objects. So I cannot apply my thought to the jinn. I have to use the information that is given by Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, let's use a correlation. I want to correlate this to, a, to, the, to the subject. But the subject is beyond my senses. So I cannot do the correlation. Because I cannot do the correlation the thinking process stops right there. So now Allah Azza wa Jal tells me that the uh, Allah tells the malaika, the angels, he told them, bow to Adam. Uh, they said, how is it possible that Adam uh, becomes a khalifa when he will do all types of distortions and uh, wrongdoing? That's information that Allah Azza wa Jal passes. How can I use this information to correlate it to the subject? I can't because the subject is beyond my senses. It's ghayb. So the information remains information. And information cannot produce a new thought. No matter how much you play with the information, it will never 
generate a new idea or new thought or new information. It remains as is. You have to understand it on its own merit, which means the scope of that information, the piece, is becomes the subject of thinking. So the question arises, how could the, the, the angels know about what Adam could do? Now, if I don't find it in the same source that told me about it, then I will abstain. I will say, my brain cannot go that far. But when I find the information that in the next ayah, where they say, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana, glory be to you, Allah Azza wa Jal, we only know the knowledge that you give us. So that means that piece of knowledge that they just revealed must have been given to them by Allah, none other source. Why Allah gave them that knowledge, how he gave it to them, that's beyond the story. See, that's now everything else now, the writing, the uh, imaginations of writers, of Muslim writers, scholars, bringing, uh, um, creating a drama from there, that's irrelevant. That's not a thought. That's not a production of information. That's absolutely, absolutely irrelevant, uh, uh, non substantial, and substantial. Now, it's not to criticize this scholar or that in the book, no, but just to, to remain within the scope of what is thinking, how thoughts are produced. And this is the only way we know is a valid way of uh, producing thoughts. I need to be able to correlate the information I have, the information I have from the Quran, which is a valid information. Now, I want to correlate it to the subject matter. The subject matter is beyond my senses. So stop right there. Do you have other information related to it? You can correlate information to information, but that does not produce a new thought. It's just, I cannot use it. I cannot have information plus information plus information plus information equal a new information. That formula doesn't, doesn't apply. In order to produce a new thought, which is not in the original sources, you have to be able to sense the, 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 the subject. What is it talking about? What is it that we, we are discussing here? Okay? So I think <laughs> that, yeah, so that uh, issue in the, uh, uh, I've read even in Ibn Kathir, if you read Ibn Kathir, you'll find amazing stories on this issue. You'll find amazing stories in Ibn Kathir uh, about in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, about the creation, how Allah Azza wa Jal created the universe on the horns of, uh, of a cow. And whenever the, the cow shakes, you will have the earthquakes. Go to Ibn Kathir, you will find some stories like these. But what is good about Ibn Kathir, he says this is narrated or said by XYZ. He does not make the conclusion himself. He says, this is what I have read. Make your own judgment on this issue. <laughs> Okay, uh, any more questions, brothers, sisters? Either my talk is not well understood or the brothers and sisters are way beyond me and either way is fine with me. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, I think it's time for Maghrib, my time here, close to Maghrib now. I think what time is it now, my time? It's, yeah, it's uh, the uh, masjid already started the preparing for them. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. I will tomorrow, tomorrow, I will not see you. I will have brother Samer comes in. And this is uh, uh, my daughter is getting married tomorrow, almost uh, at the same time that we are, we, our lecture is. So I will not be able to conduct the lecture. 
So if brother Samir can do it, I will ask him. Otherwise, uh, I will have to make up for this uh, missing uh, lecture, inshallah. Okay, assalamu alaikum, brothers. Wa alaikum as salam. Alaikum as salam. Wa alaikum as salam. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa